Hi, my name is Zanet Rama, and today we'll be going over my senior project for CN410. It is a ready-mix concrete plant business plan, and the name of my company will be Rama Concrete. First, I would like to present an overview of what I will be talking about today. We will be presenting my objectives, followed by the mission statement, a brief overview of market analysis, my marketing strategy, business strategy, and our financial plan concluding with a SWOT analysis and my acknowledgments. First, I would like to talk about my business objective. Arama Concrete as plans to establish a ready mix concrete plant in the Pacific Northwest region of the United States. We would like to develop a strong foundation of high quality service and customer satisfaction and expect to expand operation due to the Pacific Northwest region potential for high market growth. This is a a section of our mission statement, we will strive to achieve the highest customer satisfaction in the ready mix concrete industry. Market analysis. First off, the United States is divided into several regions. However, we will be focusing our efforts in the Pacific Northwest region for the high earnings associated in that region. For example, the average national concrete production per plant in the United States is about 61,000 cubic yards of concrete. However, in the Pacific North region, they outperform the national average with almost 96,000 cubic yards of concrete production. Here is the EBITDA. A EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Tax, Depreciation, and Amortization. And as you can see, the Pacific North region, located in the far right, has the highest percentage of all regions in the United States, a percentage of 17.6%. Here are the national concrete sales that we talked about earlier. Shows an average of about 61,000 cubic yards per concrete produced per plant in the United States. We plan to sell our concrete primarily to the commercial market. This is a client distribution percentage of sales pie graph showing the percentage of concrete sold to different aspects of the construction industry. As you can see, commercial is the highest at 58% of sales residential is close to nearly 31 percent of sales and miscellaneous other projects such as parking lots, public works, flowable fill, and local roads account for a small percentage of our sales. Continuing with our marketing strategy, we plan to advertise our services to various means such as construction magazines, newspapers, and our website which is under construction aramaconcrete.com. And we also plan to become members of National Ready Mix Concrete Associations. That way, we can network with potential clients and learn of various trends in the industry and stay up to date. We also plan to survey areas in the Pacific Northwest region which require the most development. Um, the Pacific Northwest is, is comprised of the, several states such as Alaska, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Washington, and Western Canada. We hope that our survey will pinpoint the high development areas in these states and the chance of us um, developing our business in that area. Let's go on to our business strategy. These are our subheadings for our business strategy to find investors, deliver superior customer satisfaction, and stay competitive during this recession. First, find investors. We'd like to find investors who are willing to meet our startup cost requirements, which we'll talk about in a little while. We want to attract investors by presenting our projected profit and losses and other useful data, and use the recession period to our advantage to find competitive rates from commercial investment banks. Deliver excellent customer service. We believe in training our personnel with certifications such as the American Concrete Institute and this will help improve our quality of control and hire individuals with a concrete degree, especially from universities with the concrete industry management program. And if we hire personnel with a degree that's not concrete, we should expect them to have at least five years of experience in concrete construction. In this recession period, we plan to remain competitive by understanding the needs of clients. For example, we, we expect to provide value engineering to not only provide our customers with the concrete they need, but provide it in the best possible cost 
savings that they can acquire it at. And we plan to start an R&D department to implement current concrete technology and further implement our technology to service our customers. Now I would like to fall under our financial plan and we will start off with our requirements for startup funding. Our estimated requirement for startup funding is around three and a half million dollars and we will break down these costs with certain aspects of our plant. First of all, we plan to um, acquire a portable plant as opposed to a permanent concrete batch plant. Talking to a concrete industry expert, a permanent concrete batch plant will run you at least eight through $12 million. At this stage, we understand that there's risk and we plan to manage risk effectively by acquiring a portable concrete batch plant where we can transport to different regions within the Pacific Northwest region where development is most productive. For example, here you see a picture of a portable concrete batch plant and this particular batch plant will run you around $200,000 as opposed to several million in a permanent location. And this batch plant provides at least 100 cubic yards per hour of concrete production capacity, which is more than enough for our needs. Also, in addition to our concrete batch plant, we need equipment and supplies to process and deliver our product to our customers. For example, we have concrete truck mixers and In addition to our concrete truck mixers, we'll need supplies and equipment such as bins to hold our ingredients to make the concrete such as aggregates and sand and cement. This will count to almost 1.5 million dollars. Each truck will cost you around 100 grand used and other equipment and supplies will count for further fees. In addition, we will need at least one million dollars for fixed costs for a year one. For example, examples of fixed costs include insurance of plant equipment, executive salaries, employee salaries, marketing costs, and quality control, to name a few. I would like to go to our sales breakdown to explain what we'll be offering to our customers. Primarily, we will be offering ready mix concrete. Nearly 90% of our sales will be in that sector. However, we will also be offering miscellaneous products such as sand and gravel and cement, chemical admixtures, and for example, we will also be charging for waiting time, fuel surcharge, and other discount discounts and returns. Th that is in our delivery section of our business. Now we'll go to our cash flow forecast. Our initial investment, as we mentioned before, will be nearly three and a half million dollars. But our average sales, we expect for a year one through 10, will be at least $8 million per year. Our average variable cost will be 5.8 million. And as mentioned before, fixed costs will be estimated at 1 million per year. We have our depreciation at $300,000. Our average pre-tax profit and taxes at 35%, which will account for $300,000. Our profit after tax will be close to half a million. So our cash flow for operations will be nearly $1 million. And I went ahead and calculated our net present value for, for 10 years based on our initial investment of three and a half million. And based on our 10 year annuity factor, we have a net present value of 2.5 million. And this helps us see that our project is feasible. Now we will go to our break-even forecast. Here we have a, a graph that basically shows the amount of revenue we need to generate to break even with our costs, our fixed costs. If you look at the graph, the solid red line that runs even from one million dollars section, that's our fixed costs. Our dotted red line is our total costs as our variable costs increase with sales. We have the, the dark black line, which is our revenues. Where the black line and the red dotted line meet, that's where we expect to break even. That's estimated at $3.6 million. 
break-even level of revenues equals fixed costs, including depreciation, divided by additional profit for each additional dollar of sales. So basically, we, we need to sell $3.6 million worth of our product to break even with our costs every year. Now we'll go to our pro forma balance sheet. Here we have a projected balance sheet from year 2010 until year 2014. It's a five-year projected balance sheet. And the main sections of this are our assets and our liabilities. As you can see, our, our assets are increasing from year to year. So are our liabilities. However, our assets are increasing at a higher rate, and we will have a positive net worth in the end of our five-year span. Here's our project balance sheet in terms of percentage of sales. For example, if our monetary sales will be different from the previous graph, we can calculate our projective assets, liabilities, net worth, based on percentages by multiplying our revenues that year by the percentages located for each category. I would like to go to our profit and loss statement. Here, these are projected profit and losses for our five year span. Once again, our sales, we estimate that we will be making $8 million per year. However, that's average. For our first year, due to entry and market, we would plan to make 25% of sales, followed by 50% of sales in 2011, 75% in 2012, and on 2013, we plan to reach nearly $8 million in sales. However, we plan to reach economy of scale by year 2014 and further improve our sales at least 10%. Our variable costs are 72.4% of sales, and the monetary items are under the sales. And our gross margin are shown there, followed by our gross margin percentage of average 27.5% per year. Shows our fixed costs, as we said earlier, $1 million per year. We have our pre tax profit and our taxes. And our first year, as you can see in the red numbers in year 2010, we expect to operate at loss in year one. However, we will be improving our net profit throughout the years until 2014. So as you can see, our net profit divided by sales, our percentages, starts at a negative but slowly increases and improves to 10% net profit by year 2014. Here's a graph that shows our profit and loss, as mentioned in the graph in this previous slide. We see that we were operating at loss, around negative 400000 our first year, but we will slightly be improving each year until 2014. Also, our gross margin yearly, starting at 500,000, increasing to nearly 2.5 million by 2014. I would like to conclude my presentation with our SWOT analysis, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. For strengths, we expect to be experts in producing the concrete our clients need, and we hope to make excellence in custom service a prime category in our strength. Weaknesses, we have no reputation in the concrete industry business. As of now, we lack capital resources and we have no financial history. However, the Pacific North region we, is our point of opportunity. We, we believe that in the Pacific North region, we will operate effectively. And potential investors will increase our opportunities to purchase the, the, the capital resources needed to grow our business and growing technology as well. Threats, our competitors, and our market recession. However, with our strengths and opportunities we have in hand, we plan to overcome these. This concludes our presentation, and I would like to show a special appreciation to the National Ready Mix Concrete Association or the NRMCA for their resources, literature, and support. Thank you.